Okay, good morning. Um, I'll probably forget, so I'll just walk down here and give everyone a wave at that end and down this end so everyone knows at least what I look like when I just stand behind the pillar. Uh, this is a kind of continuation from my talk last year where I did some troubleshooting using protocol analysis of voice. Now I want to show people what um, 11K R and V can do to voice. Um, because I'm just getting a lot of questions about it from people. It's really becoming um, quite um, popular um, in our deployments. And so I really want to look at the impact it has on voice and whether it's good or bad for us. The setup on the screen, just to disclose how I did this testing so that if you want to replicate it or scrutinize it, whichever. Um, I use an iPhone XS Max, um, lessons learned, don't upgrade the operating system to the major new version the week you're doing the testing. I don't think it bit me this time around, but I realized that it can completely have changed behavior can work compared to what I was used to, so not really the best thing to do. Um, I then use one of our B3000N clients. Um, this is a purpose-built voice client, and so I was able to configure it to use just the channel plan of 36 to 64. Uh, Cisco wireless LAN controller um, in my home lab running 8.5 of the code. Uh, three Cisco 3502i access points, not 11AC, not latest and greatest, but voice doesn't need fast, voice needs consistent. So this didn't impact the testing on what I was trying to show. I was more looking at the experience of moving from one AP to the other than the experience while I was on any single AP. Um, and I had to use three of them because in Apple, um, on their iOS, they have two roaming modes. They have a consumer mode where the device is deliberately sticky on the assumption that you're at home, you have one transmitter hosting your internet connection and you want to stay stuck to that wherever you go in your house. Um, and then they have the enterprise roaming mode where actually it knows it's in an enterprise environment where there's lots of options for it to choose from. So it actually changes its algorithm to how it roams. And to, to trigger that, you need the iPhone to see three uh, APs hosting your SSID. So I had three set up for this testing rather than just going back and forth between the two. Um, I did testing with Pre-Shared Key and Peep and I left Fastlane disabled so there was no Apple Cisco magic going on affecting the results. So hopefully this looks similar to what you guys might see with other clients. Um, I didn't use the on controller um, radius and, and authentication services. I wanted to at least push that off to a server, albeit only in my home lab, but so we were truly testing, hitting onto the LAN and doing authentication. Uh, and then to collect the data, I used OmniPeak with two hubs and eight adapters. Why did I use eight adapters when I was only using three channels? I basically just wanted to see what the devices were doing outside of where I wanted them to be to help understand the process a bit better. And then for the voice call itself, I used the Vocera app on the iPhone to make a Vocera VoIP call um, to the, the Vocera badge. Sometimes I walked around with the iPhone attached to my laptop and my test tools. Sometimes I walked around with the badge, depending on which one I was trying to measure. So my OCD makes me go alphabetical, so we're going to go KRV. Whether that's the best way to present, I don't know, but it makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. Um, so 802.11K. So who here, hands up, struggles to remember what K, R and V are? You know what they do? Okay, no one's putting their hand up here, it's just me then. Um, I always struggle to remember actually which one meant which. So I just eventually got it to stick. And one was Mr. Mackey from South Park and the fact that he offers information and then finishes it with that uh, drawn out K. Okay. So to me, whenever I think, what's 11K do? I think of Mr. Mackey and the fact he's always giving people information whether they want it or not. So to make more better decisions, we need more information. That, that's true for anything in life. Um, with roaming, the, we can make faster decisions if we have better information. Faster decisions make smoother roams, and smoother roams keep our voice users happy. So we have to look at roaming without 11K to understand the impact it gives us. So client roaming without 11K. Some clients will scan the whole channel plan. With iPhones, you can't configure what the channel plan is, so it could be scanning a lot of channels if you're using five gigahertz. Um, others will keep a cache of the channel. So really actually, well, I've been to, been to this AP before. I know roughly what was around it last time, what I scanned for, so I'm gonna scan just what's in my memory, just what I've cached. And then some clients will scan at the time it needs to roam. So, uh-oh, signal's bad, I need to improve things, I'm gonna scan now. Others will actually scan all the time, even when the signal's good, so that they know what's out there to move to when it comes time to move. All in the hope to speed up these roams to improve the voice experience. 
And then we have active and passive scanning, uh, and David touched on this earlier. Active scanning is where I go on a channel and I'm allowed to transmit instantly as a client. So I go and I immediately probe saying, hey, who can support this SSID? That would be um, a probing for a single SSID. Or you can actually broadcast probe and just say, tell me all the SSIDs that are out there. That's active where the client goes on channel and immediately starts uh, probing. Passive scanning is all these DFS channels where I'm not allowed to do that. Regulations stop me probing in case there's DFS on there. I've not done the checks that an AP does. So I have to go on, I have to listen first and I have to try and hear some of those beacons um, coming out of the APs. And then once I've heard a beacon, I can either take the information from it and be satisfied that I know what I know, or I can then actually then send a probe because I know there's traffic there. I know there's no radar, so I then probe. Just a little note, for all my testing on 11K, I reset my iPhone network settings before every single test, um, pretty much in preparation for coming here so that I wasn't broadcast, broadcasting all the SSIDs for the pen testers to jump on later. Um, but yeah, I reset it, the network settings on the iPhone and the Vosu badge every time so that it was a fresh environment. It, it hadn't learned my environment at all. So it could replicate something like if you're visiting a hotel. You know, when you turn up a hotel, your phone's never been there before. You may only transition from the reception to your room to the, uh, the gym and, and back, so you don't really know the environment. So I wanted to replicate that by resetting everything. So here's the graphs I showed last year. This is how we uh, at Vosira like to look at voice data, try and picture hundreds of thousands of frames in a very visual way. And I've included all my filters. I don't expect you to be sat there following along reading those filters. It's tiny, but the deck will be available afterwards so you can replicate these filters in your own, own environment. I use OmniPix to do the capture, and OmniPix doesn't use radio tap headers. So your Y field here is a, an OmniPeak value. You may want to just tweak your Y field if you're using radio tap coming out of your Macs. But otherwise, the main display filters, they should work pretty well. So here we've got more or less a solid black line up at the 100% mark. And that's my device transmitting. It's right by my adapter, so it's got a very strong signal, so it's deemed 100%. We could argue all day about what the hell 100% means, but let's just say it's a very good signal. Where we have the, the drops, that's where I, the, the iPhone stops transmitting, and that's what I don't want to see. I don't want these breaks in the transmission line because voice wants to be very, very sensitive. We're at a scale of 100 milliseconds here per drop, so effectively that's five voice packets every time the line drops and goes back up that you've missed for some reason, or the device is not transmitted. So the less black line, the better. We then layer on the probes. So these green bars represent when the iPhone sent a probe. And as we can see, as I said, some devices proactively scan all the time. This, this iPhone is probing all the time whether the signal's good or bad to see what it's, what's going on. And then we layer on the downstream traffic. This is my signal from the access point. These are the frames the access point is sending to me, um, at my client in particular. And that's why that goes up and down, because I'm moving around my test area. And my signal's going up and down as I roam between APs. And you can see at 120 seconds, see if I can get this pointer to work, 120 seconds and 135 seconds, lots of breaks in my transmission. And that's without 11K, the iPhone was saying, right, I need to roam, I'm gonna go and scan everything and see what there is. And so I heard these roams through the audio, I was listening to audio through these devices and I could hear these roams. They weren't horrendous, but they weren't perfect. So as a test, I actually left the iPhone in my pocket for four hours, moving around uh, my test area, and um, then I did the test again, hoping that it would have learned all these channels and I would see none of these drops. But actually, some four or five hours later when I took the test, not resetting the network settings, actually the picture wasn't an awful lot better. So um, it, it tries to learn the landscape, but it's still doing an awful lot of breaks in transmission while it, it scanned the area. And this one is like if you're looking at it from the frame point of view rather than a visualization. The top pink bar I've highlighted there is when I consider the iPhone wanted to roam. It was the very first probe, um, probe in this part of the uh, capture, and it was basically the iPhone saying, right, things are bad enough now, I need to think about somewhere else to go. And then the last one is actually the first data frame after I completed the roam. So as far as I'm concerned, between those two pink bars is degradation of signal. I'm moving away from the access point. So how long did that take? That took three seconds for the iPhone to decide it wants to move to actually starting to send data on a new access point. Three seconds when you're moving away from an access point, um, turning corners, closing doors can be quite a long time and, and can lead to quite poor voice experience. And we can see the way the iPhone roamed here in the green boxes. So the top box there, it's on channel 36, but it says to its AP, I'm going to sleep, don't send me anything. And then it goes off and probes a bunch of channels, 40, 48, uh, 44, 48, and then it comes back and does data. Um, and so 
the APU's held its data for that period, and it's actually, there's several hundred milliseconds of outage there while it did that, which again is not good for voice. Voice wants under 150 milliseconds of outage of, in, of jitter. Now we can see some of the um, boxes down here are a lot smaller, and all I see is the, uh, the, the iPhone going to sleep and then waking up and doing nothing. That's running off to a DFS channel, or it was on a channel where I adapted in capture. But what it's done is it's gone there, there's been no beacons, no nothing on that channel, so it's not probed, it stayed silent and written that channel off effectively. So let's have a look at the Isura badge. Um, I didn't intend this to be a sales pitch, but actually it does a lot better than the iPhone. But then it is a purpose-built voice device that has only eight channels to scan compared to what the iPhone was trying to do. So again, this, the, the voice line at the top, nice and smooth. We do get the occasional drop, uh, but nowhere near what the iPhone was, uh, but it's, it's designed for this job. Again, we get the green bars on there, not too many. And then we have the downstream signals. And we can see two distinct roams there. We can tell there's a roam because the blue bars come down, 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 getting worse and worse, and suddenly just a jump to the top again. And that's me roaming to an AP with a good signal. And you can see the Vosira badge with 11K off. It only probed when it needed to roam. Um, and we had a little bit of an outage there. Thankfully, we did it there. So it wasn't probing up, up in the front here. It was only probing once it actually wanted to roam. Same at the back here. It doesn't probe until the signal's getting low enough it wants to. This with 11K off. And then the same capture again, the same principle. This one took 1.7 seconds. So better than the iPhone, but a much smaller channel plan to cater for and a purpose-built device. The Vosira badge, interestingly, doesn't go off and do a bunch of channels. It tries to maintain audio in its jitter buffer to make the experience smooth. So it goes off channel and scans one channel and then comes back. Then it goes off channel, scans one channel and comes back. So that can stretch out the scanning experience, but it also means that we are getting to transmit and buffer data in between every scan so that it's a little bit smoother for the audience. So, okay, let's see what Roman did with 11K. So here's the iPhone, much, much smoother. We don't have those big black spikes, jagged drops in the transmission, so it's much, much better with it. And I've highlighted in red along the top there, I can't even standing here almost, so you guys can't back there, but basically at the top, um, I'm now showing the neighbor requests. So what the iPhone does is when it roams for a new AP, it immediately says, tell me about all the other APs that you know about that I could possibly roam to. So it's not waiting until it needs to roam and trying to have a conversation with an AP that's degrading. It actually immediately gets the AP and says, right, okay, we're gonna be bestest friends, but actually we might fall out one day, so where can I go? And it immediately asks the AP where it can go. So it has that information ready. And then we can see when it needs to roam, uh, so roam there, very small amount of green, no, no outage, small smoke, probing it goes. No outage there again, even though there's a bit more probing, a little bit of an outage there, um, So, but a much better experience. If we compare the two, the top one is without 11K and the bottom one is with. Remember that these black spikes you see on the top one, they are potentially your user hearing interruptions to the audio. So a much, much better experience. The iPhone does really, really well with 11K. And what does the, the, the frames look like? Much, much smaller. Um, we can see that, I was only, remember, if you remember the setup, I, was just, I had channel 36, 48, and 64 in my lab. So what do we see here? We see the iPhone on channel 64 go to sleep, probe 36, probe 48, and then go back to 64 and take data. Does a bit of uh, buffer emptying and then starts to roam. So it's literally just scanned where it needs to go and nothing else. So I've taken potentially 19, 20, 20 plus channels down to two in a roam. So much, much quicker. And this was really, really good experience. So this is the Vosira badge now. We don't really see much difference because it's already purpose built. Again, it's always asking for the 11K report as, the, as soon as it roams the new AP. So it knows where to go when it needs to go. Um, and it was a pretty smooth experience as usual. <coughs> Compare the two, you could argue that it looks better without 11K, but what we've got here is just at the front there, it took a long time for my signal to get low enough where I wanted to roam. So it looks good, very clear, but actually over here, there's, you know, these, this point is crazy. There's very little um, interruption there either. So pretty much on par, didn't really improve things much on the face of it. But when we look at the frames and actually do the same measurement, we see they went from a 1.7 second um, degradation to roam to a, just over half a second. So not as good as the iPhone, um, but still 
in half a second of my device saying, I don't think this is good anymore, it's transmitting data on a new AP. That's a fine experience for your users. Because there's not half a second of data outage. We can see here with these black lines where I've had to actually take out audio data to make it fit on my slide. So there's lots of audio data going on in the meantime. How far away from an access point can you guys get in half a second? Probably not far enough for it to go completely dead unless you step into a lift. So my thoughts on 11K after the testing. This impact is minimal. <coughs> that went down the wrong hole. Um, impact is minimal for clients that you can configure the channel plan on and you keep the channel plan small. But it had a huge benefit for the iPhone, which is a consumer grade client where you can't change the channel plan it's scanning. Or if you're going to have a really large channel plan, and obviously if 6 gigahertz comes in, we're going to have far greater channel plan than even 5 supports right now. So 11K will pretty much be imperative on 6 gigahertz. It's most useful to devices that are in a new area. So if you go to the shopping mall with your phone and you've not been there for a week, so it's emptied the cache of what it was doing there, it's got to relearn all those APs. It's very, very useful when you're moving through the mall from one end to the other um, and you've, you're touching APs for the first time. But if you've got a device in something like a hospital worn by nurses and they're staying by those same 20 beds for their whole shift and the device actually has built in caching already, then Leverk is maybe not going to add a huge amount of benefit. But it's better on than off. You know, 11K doesn't massively change our beacons or any of the other uh, management frames involved. It just gives us ever extra frames to use if we want to request neighbor information. So very few clients should have a problem with 11K being on if they don't support it. So I'd always say 11K is better on than off. So what about 11R fast transition? Well, it says me street time for me. R is for roaming. So that's how I remember it. This is the easy one to remember. H7R means roaming. And roaming, despite all the scanning, roaming is really that bit where you're trying to transition from one access point to the other. And that's where 11R really helps. So try and remember your, uh, your big bird or, or whatever you like from uh, Sesame Street. R is for roaming. <laughs> Historically, we've advised against dot one x because of the amount of time it's taken to do a full radius authentication. If you're using voice, we haven't recommended it. We've, although we have had proprietary solutions for a long time, CCKM for Cisco, OKC, um, these have been available to improve the dot one x experience, but um, they weren't standardized. So it was optional whether you supported them and a lot of places didn't and therefore your clients didn't use them and you couldn't. If you can use CCKM and OKFC or even fast transition, then actually the roaming is faster than pre-shared key. So, it's essential with things like EduRoam, where your authenticator could effectively be thousands of miles away. You don't want to be having a radius conversation over transatlantic links if you can help it. So again, what did it look like before we used FT? We're here, I didn't do the, the, the pretty um, visual graph because it really didn't show much here because it happens in such a quick period of time. But here we've got the iPhone doing a full roam, a full dot one X roam on peep. And we can see, I've not, talked, I've not looked at the scanning here because really what I'm trying to compare is actually the authentication type. So the very first bar is the uh, start of the outage when it tries to authenticate and the pink bar at the bottom is when it's finished and it's doing its last key message. So it took 472 milliseconds for the iPhone um, to just, just authenticate. So it's had a gradient signal, it's been doing all its scanning, now it's finally found somewhere to go, 472 milliseconds for it to actually just say hello, basically, to the new AP and get, get secure. It's a long time. On the left-hand side, there's a graph there from OmniPeak which shows quite nicely the latency for every roam I did in this test because I, I roamed through multiple APs. We can see that they're roughly round about 300 to 500 millisecond roams every single time. Voice wants 150 milliseconds uh, outage maximum. If you're taking 300 milliseconds to do a roam, your, your users will hear that. No jitter buffer is big enough to hide that. Your users will hear that roam. So what about if we put 11R over the air on? We shrink it to that. It was really quite, I was really quite impressed with it. Again, I've done the authentication and the reassociation response, which is the total amount of frames involved in the move. And we took it down from 472 milliseconds to just two milliseconds. So yes, we have had the scanning and the degradation as we try to find somewhere to go, but once we found somewhere to go, this iPhone moved to it in two milliseconds, including um, passing the keys around. So really, really fantastically fast. The OmniPeak capture there is actually, that is looking from data packet to data packet. So it's saying that even with the scanning, you were taking you know, anywhere from 30 to 60 uh, milliseconds to do it. So still nice and fast, still well below what we want for voice. So very, very impressed by that. So what about 11R over the DS? 
a lot of questions around this. I've, I've heard Peter talk about it, going to name and shame Peter, because he really likes it. He thinks this is very clever, um, because it lets the client stay on channel where it's transmitting and keep sending audio data while it negotiates the authentication, that first part. But the testing doesn't look good for it. There's an awful lot more frames involved in this than over the air. Now, yes, it's great because I'm sending audio data between those top two green boxes. So I am still transmitting audio. But ultimately, when I've decided I need to roam and I've chosen where to go, it took me 60 milliseconds to make that jump rather than two with over the air. Do you see multiple vendors using over the DS? Because I've only seen one. No, I, we've not seen anyone, and we found it quite buggy when we tried to implement it with our right. client. And I saw the same results that you saw. Okay, okay, good. David said it, everyone. You heard it here. <laughs> so just... <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Pete says different. Um, so here I've just layered them to give you the visual comparison of the, 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 the um, data involved in the move. Both 11Rs... Um, I thought they got the R there off of... Um, the 11R. Both 11Rs use the same amount of frames. They both use four frames, but one gets it done a lot quicker than the other. So my thoughts on uh, H11R in general. Um, so the faster transition has a huge impact on .1X. If you're running .1X, try and get CCKM, OKC, or uh, H11R on. It, it really makes a huge difference to your roams. Hopefully now it's part of the standard, we'll see better adoption from clients so that you guys can use it more because that's where CCKM and OKC let us down is not enough clients did it uh, for us to take advantage of it. Um, voice roaming is not a reason to stick with the pre-shared key anymore. In fact, it's quicker for voice roaming if we do go to h 11 r than, we are, than if we stuck with pre-shared key, which is consistent and repeatable, but longer. And I don't advise over the, over the DS. It sounds great, in general, but for your highly mobile time sensitive client, it requires a connection back to the AP. The AP I'm trying to get away from because it's degrading, I'm now trying to have a negotiation with. Um, you know, if I turn a, a corner with a, a really thick wall in the way, if I go in a lift or a stairwell, I have to do a full authentication, disassociation authentication to, to actually stay on the network because I can't have that transition from the old AP. And also, how the APs move your authentication over the LAN segment is completely proprietary. It's not part of the um, 802.11 standard. So how each vendor does it could be different, and we know that when uh, standards differ, when features differ, clients can sometimes have problems reacting to it. And if anyone's worried, you can, at least in the Cisco world, have FT and non-FT clients together. And I wrote a blog on it um, about a month ago when I did some testing for Vocera. You can quite happily have one SSID with both turned on and the clients are quite happy about it. Yes, some older clients don't handle the, the IEs and the beacons and things might not be okay, but the majority of clients will be okay. Okay, 11V. <coughs> so, how do you remember 11V? So for you guys that are LAN implementers and you finally want to be able to move clients and tell the client what to do, you probably see V as victory because you're finally getting what you want. You're getting the ability to control where the client goes. For me as a client vendor, I, can, I think of it as this British term, which probably won't resonate with many people in the room. Uh, but if you give someone the Vs in the UK, as Churchill's doing on the right-hand side here, um, it's basically telling the go away, get lost. It's, it's derogatory, you don't like it. So I think the network's giving me the Vs when it tries to transition me rather than victory, it's doing the right thing. That's how I remember remember it. Wikipedia tells me Churchill wasn't trying to swear here, he just obviously wasn't British enough to know he's being very rude in that right hand photo. <laughs> so 11V is, if it's 11K++, it's basically not only giving you information, but it's sort of recommending where you go, um, almost insisting on it. Um, thankfully, insisting is not the default on most vendors' equipment, so um, please don't, if you're going to use 11V, please don't turn it on. Just give the client the recommendation, not the insistence. As a client, client guy, I, I always go with the fact that no AP can know what the client is experiencing, where the client is. That's up to the client to do. Also, the client is best placed. My client is purposely built for voice. We tune all of our algorithms for moving quickly during a voice conversation. So we know better than AP that's trying to serve barcode scanners, printers, laptops, voice clients, I'm trying to be a do uh, jack of all trade. We know what we need, so I like the decision to be left to um, the client. 
And if a wrong decision is made, if you, you tell me to move and I go to the wrong place, you cost me hundreds of milliseconds of time to get back to where I need to be in scanning and authentication. And so that can be really costly for voice. So if you want to balance people, then balance your SSID with less mobile clients on, uh, but leave time sensitive clients alone. Enable 11K, use QBSS, so the client gets as much information as you can about the environment, but leave the client to make the decision. So what were my 11V results? They weren't good. There was a little bit of this, and there was a whole lot of that. Here's a zoomed in. So this is zoomed in, so it looks slightly worse than it was. But this is a zoomed in scan from my iPhone. Lots of breaks in communication while I tried to transition. Now my first red circle at the top here, that's where the network told me to go, at, go somewhere else. That was my 11V transition. It took all this time for the iPhone to do its scan to decide where to go. Yeah, hands up, 11K was off. I was trying not to mix the amendments while I did the testing. So 11K was off. But it took all that time for my client to decide where to go. And then it responds, they're going, okay, I'm off, don't worry about it. And then what does it do? It moves to an AP with even worse signal because it's been told to move and now it feels threatened and you know we don't like that, so we, we move. So it wasn't a good decision. And then the moment I connected, again, the slide's too, too zoomed out, you can't see it, but actually up in that red bubble up there still, the moment I said, okay, I'm moving and I went, the new AP went, go away, I don't want you here. It tried to transition me again. And that basically freaked the iPhone out to where it just stopped transmitting, did loads of probing, thought, oh, I found a, I found a nice guy, I'll connect to him, joined, and then went, no, you, you're no good here, go away. So it just every time I joined, um, it was saying, no, go somewhere else, which really didn't, didn't work well. So I actually pulled out Android to see if that would handle things any better. And it was even worse. Huge outages, the, iPhone, the Android didn't know what to do. And right at the end, you can see, same thing again. Every time I roamed, I was told to move. So actually what my Android did was just sat there and just flopped. No audio, just going AP to AP to AP. It was a really bad experience. What I found was the Android and the iPhone are too good at roaming. They were so good, they roamed before the network wanted them to roam um, because they had really good algorithms for, for roaming in them. So what I had to do was I had to really tighten down my network and make the optimized roaming part of it really, really aggressive um, to try and get them to roam. So what you saw there is my advanced for 11V probably isn't real world because I was using some very strict settings to try and force the transition to try and capture some evidence to come and stand in front of you beautiful, beautiful people and show. Uh, but either way, I didn't have a good experience because I had to make it very aggressive. And the reason I had to make it aggressive was because actually the phones did a pretty good job themselves. I had a Cisco bug on my controller which basically forced the disassociation, disassociation imminent bit to one. Even though I disabled it in the console and the CLI, um, sorry, in the GUI and the CLI, and it was confirming it's disabled, when those, those um, transition requests came out, it was saying it was good to associate me, which again probably freaked out the equipment a bit as well. Kind of my, my take is, if client vendors are advanced enough to include 11V support for you, they probably have written some pretty good roaming algorithms where they probably take Wi-Fi seriously enough already that um, they, they already transition pretty well. What you really want is the clients that have sucky drivers and really bad radios and really bad algorithms to support 11V, but they probably won't because the people that are making them aren't putting the effort into getting the radio right in the first place. So I want to layer all the results together and see how this improves things. So this is the iPhone. I decided not to put 11V on given what happened, but with 11K and 11R over the air, that is a very good looking uh, IO graph out of Wireshark. That voice experience was, was almost flawless with the iPhone. It knew where to go, uh, when it wanted to go, it was very focused on how it did it, and then when it roamed, the authentication was blisteringly quick. So it didn't lose much of its jitter buffer at all. <laughs> so it was really, you know, I'm used to reading these graphs, this might still look a bit alien to you, but that looks really, really good. So, to summarise, I've done it, wow. Um, the testing was conducted with two very capable voice clients. The iPhone and the Vocera badge, they are very good. So, um, I had a good experience in general. I didn't, you know, have any bad voice clients to use to test with, unfortunately. Although that's probably a good thing that they're not that common. 11K allowed the iOS device to focus where it needed to move. So, it was a huge benefit um, to, the, to the iPhones. Uh, 11R fast transition had a big impact on dot one x roam times, um, but it's not new. It's been there for a while in vendor form, so you can you could have been using it for a while. 
I don't recommend over the DS for voice, um, as we discussed. Um, and 11V showed to have very little value. In fact, it was actually dangerous in my lab environment, but your mileage may vary once you actually get out into a real enterprise deployment. So the winner's podium, I think 11K helps the iPhone con constantly, whether it's on PSK or Dot one x 11K had the biggest impact overall for the iPhone. But when you're using Dot one x 11R over the air was a close second place because it was a for not, you know, two milliseconds to, to authenticate is amazing. And then I actually had to hash out 11. I don't think it deserves a uh, spot on the podium. Thank you very much.